first day of the Reading Rush Challenge of 2020 and I am super excited. I debated on staying up until midnight na last night but I haven't been sleeping well so I decided that no, I am going to sleep before this readathon because I don't know how much sleep I'll be getting throughout the readathon. So, I am super excited. Today is the first day. Uh, if you watched my TBR video then you know that I only own one physical copy of one of the books and that is The Secret Garden and this is also the book that I'm using for like four challenges I think for a majority of the challenges and it could qualify for more of them but I'm not just gonna do one book I am gonna actually try and do more than one because that would just be nice in this video this since this is day one I'm also going to have all of the video challenges in this vlog as well and so one of the challenges the second one was actually to match your outfit to your book and I figured it would be really hard to match my outfit to one of the audiobooks I'm listening to because they're on my phone and so it just wouldn't really get that same, you know, like actually matching something. But I do not have a lot of bright yellow clothing items. Like the closest I had was like this mustard dress and I was like, you know what, I'm good for a dress today. So this is the best that I can do, literally. Like this was the best that I could do was just this plain yellow dress to match this mostly yellow book. I also don't have a lot of flower accessories. So I tried, but I think this challenge was a little bit of a failure for me. But of course I had to choose a book with a bright yellow cover and I have nothing else yellow in my closet. Not even anything like wintry or warm. Like I, I just don't. And of course I love drinking tea as do many other book dragons and so I will go ahead and put in a clip of me making tea as that is the first challenge and tea is good, tea is great, so here you go. And then the last challenge is an interesting one because it's your favorite book memory. Share your favorite book memory. And here's the thing is that I don't have a lot of book memories uh, just because I have a horrible memory. <laughs> so I don't really remember most things. Um, but there is one interesting story that comes to mind and I'm warning you now it's, it's a little bit of a deeper story. So. When I was growing up, when I was a lot younger, my parents loved listening to audiobooks, but this was like before they could do it on their phone or before they either of them owned headphones. So they would always get the CDs from the library and put them into our CD player. And so when my mom is cleaning the house and listening to an audiobook, everyone is listening to the audiobook because she's listening to it through our big old CD player and a lot of times she's moving throughout the house, you know, she cleans the upstairs bathroom, she cleans the downstairs bathroom, she cleans this room. You know. So it's like, if my mom's listening to an audiobook, everyone is listening to an audiobook. And in winter, you know, even before winter, as soon as like November hits, my mother starts listening to A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens every single year. And here's the thing. She doesn't just listen to it once in November, she listens to it on a loop until February. I, I am not kidding here. I've heard her listen to it in November and I have heard her listen to it in January and throughout all of December in between. So I have listened to just bits and pieces and random orders of A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens because of my mother's obsession with listening to the audiobook for three months and that was something that me and my brother were always like oh mom not again you do this every year and you do it for so long we're sick and tired we would always joke about that and we'd be like oh my word i am so sick of this i'm going to find headphones and plug it into something else and then so i am about to head into my sophomore year of university 
but before I was a freshman, I took a gap year between high school and university. And in this gap year, I went to a foreign country for a year where I was an English teacher. And so I went to Kyrgyzstan, which is a small country in Central Asia. It's underneath Kazakhstan, which is a huge country, which is underneath Russia, and it's right next to China, and it's like above India. It's literally the most central country in Central Asia, and it's not very big. Um, so I went there with who is now my fiance, and we were English teachers, and they speak Russian there. I hadn't learned any Russian before going there, um, but I was enrolled in Russian courses while I was there. Um, so we were there technically as like missionaries, but doing missionary work was illegal in Kyrgyzstan, so we were there officially as English teachers and as students, but we were sent from a missionary group. I'm a Christian, so I'm just going to clear that up. Um, but our main goal was not, and I do want to be clear, that even though I was a Christian missionary, my main goal was not to convert people. It was to support people. Because there would be kids in hard uh, family situations because they were Christian rather than um, some other religion or even non-religious. So I was there to support them, not to evangelize or to press my faith upon people. That's a huge like misconception that people have of missionaries is that all they do is they go out to the world to try and convert people to their religion. Not always. <laughs> Sometimes yes. I won't say that nobody does that. Sometimes yes, but that's not what I was doing. Anyway, back to the story. So we were there and it was winter months. I think it was November, like the end of November, early December. And I decided to join the music team at my church in the capital city of Bishkek. And it was an English-speaking church. It was a church made up of missionaries um, with a few local people, but it was, it was mostly for the foreigners passing through or missionaries who were there for long term. And so I decided to <laughs> join the praise team, join the music team. But what I did not realize was that I needed to have a religious certificate or a religious visa to allow me to um, practice my religion. The, the church that we were in was on private property and we owned the property, but it was, it was still considered practicing uh, your faith in a public or um, non-private area. And I didn't know this, so I, and really no one really knew of this, uh, because it's not something that's talked about at all. Um, so one day I was, and I was actually in training to be a music leader, to lead my own team for Sundays one day. Um, but, uh, one day my mentor and I were leading our group in, in the service, and there was a morning service and then there is a second service. And so in between those services, um, we, <laughs> well, one of the secretaries of the church approached us and said, you need to talk to some people right now. And I looked at my mentor, who's also from England. Like, like I said, this is an all, like, missionaries church. Like, there's me, an American. There's my mentor, who's from England. There is our pastor from Canada, our other pastor from Brazil. And so, like, <laughs> yeah. So we're pulled aside into a room. And we were then made aware that what we were doing was illegal. And that we could be arrested and deported just for singing some songs in front of other people who were already Christians who went there of their own free will and we were held in that room for a little more than two hours and it was really hard because they didn't speak English and I didn't speak Russian so our secretary who was a local Kyrgyz was translating back and forth for us and we're all sitting here like I didn't know I need a religious visa I just have a student visa and I'm so they were threatening us with uh, deportation, with uh, arresting us, and um, enacting these punishments on us. And our pastor, bless him, just completely was like, don't like do anything to them, because they have student visas, they're here to learn. I was telling them to sing, I was telling them to do these things, and he just completely like threw himself under the bus for us. And once he convinced them of that, they let us go. Um, luckily, all we got was a small fine. All the church was was small fine um, because we were uh, in process of getting paperwork 
for some people. I don't know, it's, it was like a whole thing, but like, we ended up being okay. Our pastor was okay. Um, no one was allowed to do any religious activity, so no singing, no praying, no sermons, nothing, um, unless they were a local person, and like I said, there were very few local people in the church, so we struggled for a little bit, but it was okay. But I was so completely frazzled by this experience. I had traveled before, but never for a long period of time, and I'd never been threatened with being arrested or deportation and it and we were only halfway through our year there so I was like oh no what am I gonna do and I was just I, I was having a very hard time and so what I did as soon as I got home got and with and getting home for me was um half an hour walk and then an hour on a public bus to get to where I was living so the, the journey to get to the church wasn't exactly around the corner um as I lived a couple cities away um, first thing that I did, I was like, oh, someone told me that there was a library with English books, books in English. So I was like, I'm, I'm going to check that out and go to books for my comfort because I don't know what else to do. And I went into that library and one of the biggest books that I saw that caught my eye was a complete works of Charles Dickens, which included A Christmas Carol. So I was like, you know what? I really miss my family right now. I can't talk to them about what happened in fear of my media being monitored. Um, I couldn't uh, FaceTime with them and tell them this. I couldn't send an email. I couldn't do anything like that. Um, so this was just kind of sitting on my chest. And I, when I saw uh, Christmas Carol, I immediately went, I immediately remembered all those times that my mom played the audiobook around the house for three months during the Christmas season. And it was hard enough because Christmas was coming up and I wasn't going to be with my family for the first time for Christmas. Like that's always just a hard thing. Um, so I got that book and I read it for the first time all the way through on my own. And it brought me <laughs> so much comfort and <laughs> It meant a lot to me in that moment, and it, it still does, and now every year, I I don't know if I'm going to read it every year, um, now that, you know, I'm in university and I'm away from my family, um, but it definitely, whenever I'm missing home, that's always the book to turn to, because it had such a uh, presence in my upbringing, and it just reminds me of home when the weather is cold. So that, that is, uh, I, I don't know why, it, it's not exactly my favorite book memory, but it also, it's probably the most meaningful book memory that I have, um, just cause it definitely got me through this experience. I, my, at the time, at, at the time boyfriend, but now fiance, and I were thinking, you know, what if we were to just ask to go home for Christmas and then never come back. <laughs> no, that didn't happen. We did come back. Um, we were still able to actually go home for Christmas, but we did end up coming back anyway. Um, so yeah, I don't, that's, that's kind of my most memorable, um, most comforting book memory that I have. Ta-da! <laughs> I don't know what to say anymore. I have completed the three challenges now to the best of my ability. And so I am going to make some phone calls and then I'm finally going to go outside and start reading as it's been raining quite a bit this past weekend. So I'm hoping that like, since it's not raining right now, I can go outside and start reading this outside. Um, so yeah, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start reading The Secret Garden in my own garden, so I'll catch up with you guys later. So I am on my way to a doctor's appointment and they asked me to be there 20 minutes early, so I'm sitting here thinking, if I can get the paperwork done very quickly, I'll have time to read. So I'm gonna leave in just a couple minutes, so I'm gonna sit here on my front porch and do a little bit of reading until it's time to leave, and then hopefully when I get there I can do some reading as I wait, because I am mostly healthy except for exactly what I need the appointment for so the hopefully the forms will be quick and easy I don't have COVID at least I haven't had any symptoms or been exposed to someone who has tested positive so hopefully that'll all go well and I can finally get some reading done so just like in my normal readathon fashion it's six o'clock day one I have read 14 pages 
of the secret garden and was able to read like the first chapter and a half at the <laughs> at the doctor's office so and i haven't listened to any of the audiobooks i got two audiobooks for this i haven't listened to either of those yet um so i have not gotten off to a great start with this um like i said it's six o'clock i'm going to hi poppy my cat's moving um i'm gonna eat dinner i'm going to really try and get last month's video up because my computer has just been refusing to get the video out of the editing program and onto the computer so i can upload it so i'm gonna try and do some work with that and then once the, that's done i'm gonna upload this vlog so while day one isn't officially over i am saying uh, that this is all for day one vlog and that um, I didn't do very much physical reading but I hope to listen to an audiobook more for the rest of today so I tried and I will catch up with you guys for tomorrow for day two of this reading vlog um, if you want to follow my reading vlogs if you want to follow my journey and follow these vlogs feel free to click the subscribe button and even share it to other people who love watching reading vlogs like this. Like the video as I will continue to be doing the challenges. I have yet to do the Instagram challenge so I'm hoping to do that tonight. And yeah, I'm going to be doing one of their other video challenges was to make a video doing the rush to reading tag. So I will be filming that hopefully in a day or so and get it edited and uploaded if I can figure out this whole problem. So there we go. That, that's all I'm going to say. I will catch up with you guys tomorrow in another video. Happy reading!